In today's always connected world, the average American household has more than 10 internet connected devices. Between our mobile phones, tablets, and laptops, we're always connected to the internet. Now imagine having only one computer in your house that connected to the internet and it used your telephone line. This is the story of how people connected to the internet in the 1990s. Before there were internet service monopolies, I mean internet service providers like Cox, Comcast, and Spectrum in the United States, consumers surfed the information superhighway on a very limited basis. Imagine being on the internet for just five hours per month. It seems wild now, but there was a time in the 1990s when people used the internet for less hours than an eight hour workday. In this episode, we'll look at some notable internet service providers from the 1990s. These companies include CompuServe, Prodigy, and AOL, with some quick mentions of Genie and eWorld. Some had their roots in companies such as H&R Block, Sears, IBM, and CBS. These companies were on the frontier of creating the internet we all enjoy today. They got us connected to the information superhighway and implemented cutting edge technologies such as chat services, email, online shopping, and online advertising. To connect to the internet in the 1990s, People used the family telephone line. Most families had one telephone line, and when the computer was connected to the internet, it meant that the telephone line was in use. This also meant that there was usually just one family computer sitting in the family room where everyone surfed the web together. In the days before high-speed broadband internet, customers had to dial into their internet service provider and were all confronted with this infamous screeching sound. This meant that your computer was connected to the internet, which provided your connection to all of your online friends and content. The first of these internet service providers is CompuServe. In the early 90s, CompuServe was the market leader and was owned by tax preparation company H&R Block. CompuServe had roughly 600,000 members at the time. They were focused on providing pure data and a text-only interface. CompuServe, also known as CompuServe Information Services, was originally founded in 1969 as CompuServe Network in Columbus, Ohio, as a subsidiary of Golden United Life Insurance. In 1979, the company began offering dial-up online service to consumers, which became their internet service. The tax firm H&R Block acquired CompuServe the following year in 1980. Before the internet competition heated up in the 1990s, CompuServe was a significant part of H&R Block sales. By 1989, it had contributed $68 million to the company's sales. CompuServe also came up with the idea of online shopping. Their service was called the Electronic Mall, where you could purchase goods through the online service. In 1985, CompuServe customers could purchase goods from Tiffany & Company, Bloomingdale's, Walden Books, Neiman Marcus, and others. The second significant internet service provider of the 1990s was Prodigy Internet. It came as the result of a weird combination of efforts from Sears, CBS, and IBM. It was aimed at consumers and focused on shopping and entertainment. Prodigy's initial business model relied more on online shopping and advertising for cash flow than monthly subscriptions. Users were charged a flat monthly fee that provided unlimited access and 30 personal messages. Despite having a focus on shopping to generate cash, the shopping experience came a little too early. There was a perception that users would have to pay a premium for shopping online. Another reason for poor online merchandising were the pictures of the products. Given the technical limitations of the time, it was not possible to render realistic product images. Prodigy Internet saw growth during this time as a result of an aggressive marketing campaign that bundled the internet service with consumer computers such as the IBM PS1 and PS2. By the summer of 1995, Prodigy boasted 1 million subscribers. America Online, also known as AOL, was founded in 1985 as Quantum Computer Services. It began as a provider of online services for Commodore computers. In 1991, the company officially changed its name to America Online and began offering its services on Macintosh and IBM compatible computers. AOL continued building brand awareness to consumers with the goal of connecting people to the internet. AOL started their internet service at the price point of $9.95 for the first five hours and $3.50 for each additional hour. 
Starting in 1993, AOL started to promote email by using direct mail. It'd be a continuous challenge for all of the internet services to get people to try them. In the summer of 1993, AOL mailed out several hundred thousand floppy disks. AOL saw a high success rate from consumers. Roughly 10% of all users being sent these disks were responding and being converted into customers. That's an extremely high response rate when you consider that it was usually a 1% response rate. This led AOL to doubling down on the program and moving to sending out CDs. If you're a parent or child of the 90s, you'll remember seeing these CDs in your mailboxes or in your magazine inserts. AOL had flooded the market with these CDs, according to Jan Brandt, AOL's former chief marketing officer. She said that 50% of the CDs produced worldwide had an AOL logo on them. We were logging in new subscribers at the rate of one every six seconds. By the mid-1990s, AOL had surpassed Prodigy and CompuServe in total members. AOL had 4 million subscribers, while Prodigy was at 2 million. By the end of 1997, AOL had purchased its rival CompuServe, giving AOL a total of 12 million subscribers. Given its hypergrowth, AOL's reach was already changing human behaviors while using the internet. Users were already starting to become addicted to the internet. When AOL went down for 19 hours in 1996, some users didn't know what to do with themselves, prompting this response from a consumer. The crash of America online left them feeling lost in cyberspace. Basically the entire thing had crashed. And your reaction? Oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> AOL was so popular in the 90s, it led to the hit movie, You've Got Mail, starring Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. I go online. Welcome. Welcome. And my breath catches in my chest until I hear three little words. You've got, got mail. mail. Today, AOL's millions of customers have moved on to other services. AOL still has a fairly lucrative base of customers who pay for technical support and identity theft services per month. There are about 1.5 million monthly customers still paying $9.99 or $14.99 for AOL Advantage. This nets out to over $100 million in annual revenue. In addition to CompuServe, Prodigy, and AOL, the key players of the early internet in the 1990s, there are two other notable services. General Electric, a household name brand, launched its internet service called Genie, an acronym for General Electric network information exchange as a way for consumers to access the internet. Genie had a reputation for being the online text and state-of-the-art non-texter 3D graphics with games like Kesme's Air Warrior. Genie subscribers topped out at around 350,000 users. The service was shut down on December 27, 1999 due to the Y2K problem. Apple Inc., the company known for Macs and iPhones, also had a brief stint as an internet service provider. Its service known as eWorld was operated between June 1994 and March 1996, offering email, news, software installs, and bulletin board systems. eWorld's back-end internet was run on top of General Electric's Genie internet. By September 1995, eWorld had 115,000 subscribers, compared to 3.5 million subscribers for AOL. When eWorld shut down on March 31, 1996, remaining eWorld subscribers were offered to switch to AOL. Apple still owns the name eWorld and domain name eWorld.com. As of early 2023, type in eWorld.com and it redirects to Apple.com. My name is Terry Lee and you've been watching a story from Terry Lee Stories. This is the first of many more videos we will be bringing you in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next story.